Happy Weasel Wednesday. Welcome to Shop Time. Patrick Tipton here, and I am obviously sitting in my truck, not in my shop, because I'm about to go on a little adventure. Very exciting milestone for the Weasel Restoration Project today. So let's go for a little ride and see what we find at the other end. Woohoo! We're here. Let's see what we're gonna pick up. What do we see here? It looks like a shipping operation. Wonder what's behind those doors. All right, guys, so you can see I made it back with my loot, and I am so fired up to have these things. And the reason I'm so fired up is because these are 15-inch tracks, and they are incredibly rare um, compared to the later tracks, the 20-inch wide tracks that were put on the M29 and M29C, and most of these T24s got retrofitted with a 24-inch track. So this is a really, really cool thing to get. I am so thankful that this gentleman decided to sell them to me and that I have them and they're just in great condition all things considered and they're not perfect and I can't run them hard but I could put them on the weasel as they are. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about tracks and weasels. We're working on a book right now, um, Portrayal Press, on the weasel that will come out I think probably early next year and it's a great book. David Doyle's writing it and it is fantastically researched and so we have a lot of information about track development and the various styles and differences in the track. But I am not an expert yet. I haven't read all of his work, and uh, so I know part of this, and I can sort of tell you the, the arc of the story and have it right. But uh, don't hold me to every last detail yet, because we haven't quite finished um, all these sections, and I'm not totally up to speed. I'm still learning about uh, weasel tracks. All right, guys, let's talk weasels and weasel tracks 101 here. And again, with the little caveat that uh, I know a decent amount, but I am not the, uh, the, the final expert on these. I'm still learning, too. So. The T-15 is the first weasel. It is a two-seat uh, vehicle that had 15-inch wide grousers or the plates on the track and an engine in the rear. And it was, they made 600 of them. It was successful at the role that it was designed to do, which was basically to take you over snow and ice, but it didn't go up hills very well. And one of the things that they found out doing testing, they did a bunch of testing up in Canada, was that it would go up hills much better if it went backwards. And that was because the weight of the engine was in the back. And actually going backwards at the time, the drive was in the front. So you basically had a rear drive and a front motor. So the T24 second iteration, they made a thousand of those, and that's what we're restoring here, ended up with a front motor and a rear drive and um, was a much better performing vehicle. Same basic 15 inch tracks, and they changed a bunch of things about them, but in a, again, 15 inch wide grousers. But those tracks in testing were also prone to failure. And the reason was because there were only two bands holding the tracks together. And those bands were made out of rubber and steel. And they took a steel band and wrapped it around a couple times and connected it. And then they put these little cleats onto which they attached all of the grousers. So this is a later set of 20 inch tracks that you can see here. And they're basically the same design as the 15 inch ones that you see here with a couple exceptions we'll talk about. But so these are the main bands that supported it. They're riveted on, these little cleats are embedded into the rubber. And if you looked on the end, you probably can't see it, but there are four steel cables right here. Again, that was a continuous steel cable that was joined at some point, And that's what held them all together. This piece out here is a stabilizer, and they added those. Now, the 15-inch tracks that I have here, the original T24 tracks, didn't have this stabilizer. And apparently, based on some of the reports that I've read about testing, when you turned hard, the tracks would go like this back and forth, and it caused wear. 
um, on these guides, and it also caused sometimes these um, actual grouser plates to break. Now, just a, a word about grouser plates. They're incredibly complicated. There are many, many pieces. I don't know. I have the plans and I can tell you better, but there are many, many pieces involved in this. So you've got road pads that are attached to these, basically these are, I don't even know what you call these, but I guess they're cleats probably as well, um, that basically give you traction. You've got this flat stamped plate. Um, and then on this side, you've got guides that are, are riveted on. You've got the bands that are riveted on. You've got the stabilizers in this particular set that are riveted on. So one of the reasons that tracks and weasels are so uh, expensive is because, and nobody's duplicated this particular design, is because it's so labor intensive to manufacture and we're not manufacturing enough of them. There are not enough demand for weasel tracks to really go to the trouble of doing something like this. And we're gonna come back to that in a second. But anyway, so the T15 tracks came out, they were so-so, we modified them, put them on the T24. We had more problems. And by the time the M29 came out and was a standardized vehicle, they had added, this is a World War II modification. They added this little cable, uh, again, rubber encased, and that basically did the trick. And this is what weasels had in World War II. Now, you'll find a lot of weasels, in fact, most weasels, because many weasels got used after the war, have a similar band to this one on the outside. Now those are post-war tracks. And again, there are lots of variations. There are 55 grouser tracks and 56 grouser tracks, minor 56. So different spacing, the sprockets require differences, a lot of differences, and I'm, I'm not totally up to speed yet on that. I'm still learning. But um, anyway, so that is basically Weasel Track 101 and a little history of the weasels. All right, folks, with that, I am going to call this a wrap, but I'm going to give you a real quick summary of how far we've come in the last 10 months, right? So uh, I started with this restoration project in January. We had a mild winter, so I got out in the shop a decent amount. Then we had the pandemic, and I worked every day in April. And we've almost gotten this hold on, which is kind of remarkable uh, given the way these restorations usually go and how long it takes. And it is a testament to the fact that if you get out to your shop every day, or every other day, or several days a week, even for an hour, you can make a huge amount of progress because most of the time I've been out here, it's been less than two hours. I come out a lot at like nine o'clock at night and uh, my family all says, see it, we got things to do, homework, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I come out to my shop and plug in for an hour and do my work and go back in. And most of this work has been done that way. And yeah, there've been some long days I've put in, but for the most part, that's how I've gotten it done. So if you got a project and it seems overwhelming, whether it's a restoration project, or you're trying to grow your business, or you're trying to become a writer, or go do something else that takes a long time, just remember that you get there with little small steps. So um, show up as much as you can, and just put a little work in there, and you'll look back and realize, wow, I've come a long way in a relatively short period of time in, in, in when you take the whole perspective in. So with that, I'm going to say thanks again, as always, for tuning in. Hit the like button if you're enjoying these videos. Make sure you're subscribed. You can also turn on notifications, and you'll get a notification when we post videos, again, Wednesdays and Sundays for the most part. So with that, I will say you guys keep your corner square. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Patrick Tipton signing off and thanks again.